As an NSCS member, one of the most pivotal first things you'll do after graduating or even just before is negotiate your starting salary. In this video, we'll cover three main aspects, your preparation, the negotiation phase, and closing the deal. Let's start with how you prepare. Clearly, the goal is to get as much as you can from that first offer, but probably even more important is understanding how much you'll actually need. More graduates than you can imagine get settled into their first job, get an apartment, a new car, and then get their student loan payment booklets and realize they aren't making enough to live this lifestyle. The first thing you should do is create a simple budget. Your budget will help you identify how much you'll be spending on rent, car payment, utilities, cell phone bill, student loans, credit cards, gas, food, and miscellaneous expenses. By no means does this need to be exact, but a good idea of how much these things will be will certainly help. As you make your budget and you consider how much income you'll need, keep in mind those dreaded income taxes that get taken out before you see your paycheck. It's a good idea to assume that roughly 30% of your monthly pay will go away in taxes and other deductions. That means if you're making $42,000 a year or $3,500 a month, your paychecks will total around $25 or $2,600 a month after taxes. Once you have a rough idea of your budget and what you'll need to earn, the next step is researching what jobs like yours pay. The simplest way to do this is to use websites like Glassdoor and Payscale. By typing in the job title and city in which you're applying, you'll get a listing of average pay for the job entered. This is critical to the salary negotiation so you know what the market will bear. It's best to have some idea of what may be offered prior to a sit down or phone interview in case you're asked, how much do you need to make? Your job offer will typically come in one of two ways, either verbal or written. A verbal offer is done usually in person or over the phone, and it's literally someone saying, we'd love to have you work here. Our starting salary for this job is $42,000. The written offer is typically coming to you through email or a formal letter from the HR department. However the offer will be presented, it's important to know what to do from there. Once you've received an offer, the next step is negotiating for more. The one critical thing to know about negotiating your salary is there's typically a salary range that the person doing the hiring is authorized to offer. Depending on the skills, the qualifications, and the salary needs, your future employer may have a range of let's say forty dollars to $52,000 for this particular position. Their goal is to get you a fair salary, but to keep some of their allowable salary held back in case they need to pay out a performance or a merit bonus, use money for training, or just have extra in their departmental budget. My recommendation is to let them set the floor of the negotiation. Go first, and you may give them a number lower than what they were prepared to pay. Go second, and you now know what the starting point of that negotiation is. If they ask you what you need to make before presenting an offer, you've already armed yourself with the research of what the average salary is, as well as what you need to thrive from your budgeting exercise. Simply say, hey, based on my research, the average salary for a position like this in this area is $48,000. Based on my skill set, my personal budget, and the expenses from school, I'm asking for $50,000 a year. Assuming you've done the research on the company you're interviewing with, you'll be able to rattle off your skills and accomplishments that relate to the company's overall goals. This confirms to the hiring manager that you've done your homework and you'll add to the success of the organization. Shoot for three solid statements in support of your salary that you can rattle off from memory. Once you're presented with a verbal or written offer, most important in the negotiation phase is to say, I'd like to take 24 hours to think it over and talk with a couple of my advisors. Would that be fair? Candidly, I don't care if your advisors are your cats. The goal here is to have a cooling off period to think about the offer and then potentially come back with your requests. It's difficult to do this in the moment when an offer is presented, but much easier after 24 hours and making some talking points to come back with. How to do this is fairly simple. When you reach out to the hiring manager, honoring the 24-hour time frame you've requested, use the following language to close the deal. 
I greatly appreciate the offer and am very interested in working for your firm. Based on my research, I found the salary range for this position to be between $44,000 and $53,000. Due to my student loans and the cost of living here in the city, I'd like to be closer to $53,000. Is that possible? At this point, you'll just want to be quiet, and it will seem very uncomfortable as there may be silence on the other end of the phone. More than likely, they're calculating in their mind if it's possible to get you to this range. Just know that when negotiating, whoever talks first generally loses the negotiation. One thing is for certain in salary negotiations, if you don't ask for more, you won't get more. And the starting salary will determine your next salary jump as they're usually bumped up by an incremental percentage. So the higher you start, the more you're likely to get on your next pay raise. All the more reason to get really good at this process. As it relates to benefits, this will be fairly standard, but it's good to know what kind of benefits are being provided in the offer. Specifically, understand what health benefits look like, how much the employer pays versus you pay, do they include dental and vision insurance? How much time off and or sick days are allotted? What does the 401k or profit sharing plan look like? As well as if there is a student loan repayment benefit. Benefits are a very expensive part of the salary package for employers. So no, they will probably bring up the value of them when negotiating and it's significantly more than you think. If by chance you are denied the additional money you're asking for, and candidly, that may happen at some firms who have very set pay scales, simply ask if you could add a 180-day wage review in the contract. If they agree, then you have something to fall back on in six months, and by then, you will have blown their minds with your creativity and hard work. Good luck on the search, the salary negotiations, and winning at life.